This is Jenny Brandt with Unleash Your God-Given Healing. Today, we're going to talk about eight keys for surviving a hurricane, something I never thought I'd have to do before. You see, we live in an area a good 250 miles from any coast, and getting through a hurricane has never been on my radar before. The most we ever dealt with with a hurricane was medium winds and maybe some increased rain. In fact, where we live is where most people come to evacuate from hurricanes. But this time, the equivalent of a class two hurricane came our way. And this is what we learned from our experience with Hurricane Helene. So today I wanna to share with you eight keys for surviving a hurricane. And keep in mind that these eight keys are for those not told to evacuate. If you've been told or mandated to evacuate, please do so. The first one is simple. Neighbor helping neighbor is what saves lives. Our recent hurricane was unprecedented, wreaking havoc flooding, power outages, and trees on houses and blocking roads. Samaritan's Purse was among the first organizations on the scene, helping many with their Black Hawk helicopters and trained volunteers. But it was neighborhood communities looking out for their own that saved many lives. Let me give you just one example. An elderly couple, friends of ours, who have served in ministry all their lives in their 80s, barely survived when their neighborhood of 31 homes, which had never flooded before, forced them into holding their dogs and cats in several homes, which had water up to their chest. There was a video that the news took of this, actually showed on the news, and it's when they realized that the water is not stopping and that they need to go to higher ground. What a devastating thing to realize. But fortunately, the neighbors on the street above them were checking to see who they could help. The young men with paddle boards and kayaks set out to save those unable to cross the creek that had become a raging river. The other neighbors formed a human chain and safely passed each of the neighbors and their pets to higher ground one at a time. By the time any government or volunteer agency could have reached these folks, it would have been too late. And the stories of neighbors checking on and helping neighbors were the rule of the day in this storm. In my own neighborhood, men were driving around in golf carts, checking to see which neighbors needed help getting out of their driveways with trees on them. By the end of the day, all of our roads and driveways, which were covered by 20 to 30 trees, were cleared of fallen trees, allowing access to our neighborhood and for people to be able to get out of our neighborhood. If we had waited on the Department of Transportation to clear all of these trees with the impossible task that they had before them, the power trucks could not have gotten to our neighborhood to give us power. The more we checked on neighbors, the more needs we saw that needed to be met people needing their insulin refrigerated, people needing electricity for heart monitoring and oxygen. With our own resources, we could meet these needs. Never forget, we must always look after our neighbors because we may be the only ones who are close enough to help. Number two, we learned that cash is king. With so many power outages, most gas stations and grocery stores were not able to take credit or debit cards. It's rare for people to have cash on hand today, 
because we have become a cashless society. But after a hurricane or any natural disaster, cash may be the only thing that will suffice. So make sure you have ample cash before the storm arrives. Number three, store food, water, and gas in advance and charge all electronics. It was a relief to finally get power. And after cleaning out refrigerators and freezers with spoiled food, only to find grocery stores literally empty and gas stations closed. We learned from our friends impacted by Hurricane Hugo in the lower part of South Carolina so many years ago, what they did when they were cut off from fresh water, food, gas, and power for literally months. They told us to store these items and always have them on hand. You never know when something might happen. As a result, we have 10 five gallon water jugs stored in our basement with a hand pump for service. We also have foods that store well in ample supply should they be needed. The day before the hurricane, we charged all of our electronics and backup chargers and filled our gas containers. It's also helpful to fill your bathtubs with water should you lose water supply for necessities such as flushing toilets. Once the power was out, we were able to communicate with our cell phones because they were charged with backup chargers as well. We were prepared. Number four, a generator is a much needed necessity. Some of our neighbors have Generax, which came in very handy, but it at least helps to have a power generator run by gas or by lithium battery to run your refrigerator and freezer off of. We were able to run both while occasionally unplugging one or the other to charge cell phones, use the microwave and make a cup of coffee. We were even able to take a warm bath with water stored in our hot water heater. And those hot baths eventually did give out. Neighbors with Generax were opening their homes for hot showers and relief to those who needed it. Again, neighbors helping neighbors is key. Number five, upgrade your iPhone to access satellites should you have no cell reception. I've heard people say that the hardest thing to lose during a storm was communication with others. You didn't know what was coming next. You didn't know what was going on. If you have an iPhone 14 or newer, please upgrade to iOS 18. If cell service is degraded or damaged by the storm, such as it was in North Carolina in many places, you can use your iPhone to send messages via a satellite in an emergency. My son taught me how to do this as he loves to camp in the wilderness, but he knows how to access a satellite if he has no cell reception. You see, we can't be rescued if no one knows where we are and that we need help. Helicopters were also dropping starlings donated by Elon Musk which gave people the ability to communicate when many cell towers were literally destroyed, thanks to Elon Musk. Number six, look at what you can do to help. I'm so impressed with all the volunteers who rushed to help those who were in the most destitute areas. Samaritan's Purse, as I mentioned, was first on the scene after neighbors with their trained and dedicated volunteers. My friends in Boone told me that their headquarters, of course, being in Boone, which was also hit with power outages and damage everywhere, Samaritan's Purse employees and people left their own homes in disrepair to go out and serve those in more desperate situations. Nothing stopped them from their mission and they're continuing to work today. 
I was 10 days out from surgery when Helene came through. So lifting and cleaning brush were not possible for me, nor is it possible for some people. We may not all be able to do the heavy work, but we can all do something. We can give to those organizations such as Samaritan's Purse, Southern Baptist Disaster Relief, and churches who are involved. We can give directly to those people who lost everything whom we know. Keep in mind that most of the people in North Carolina did not have flood insurance because they were in the mountains and not in flood prone areas. Number seven, rely on your faith. Keep your faith in the midst of the storm. The Bible clearly tells us so many times that God is with us in the storms of life. It's important to remember that in the midst of the chaos, we can look for the silver linings even in the middle of devastating damage. Keeping an eternal perspective helps to keep us in balance. Stuff can be replaced, but making it out alive is the most important thing. And this one is for those who know they are in flood prone areas. Number eight is gather valuable information and needed items. It's best to put valuables and precious keepsakes on the highest floors and shelves. Before the storm, it's advisable to pack important papers, cash, remember cash is king, flashlights, batteries, and stored energy, backups, medications, extra clothes, and shoes and waterproof bags in a large backpack. Also, place your cell phone and other electronics in a waterproof bag that you buy ahead of time. You will need that cell more than you can possibly imagine. Have this emergency bag ready to go the night before the event. In the event, you must exit quickly. Better safe than sorry. Also, always know the safest route to higher ground. Plan that escape route in advance. There's no time for mistakes when time is short as it was for so many folks in Western North Carolina. Being prepared ahead of the storm is key to surviving it, but looking after our neighbors is the best way to save lives. The government and relief workers cannot be where all of us are. They have their much needed part to do, but so do we. It takes a community to survive and rebuild a community. Everybody can't do everything, but never forget, everybody can do something. And this is what it takes to survive a major catastrophe or hurricane as we've just been through in the Southeast, particularly in Western North Carolina. I hope this information has been helpful to you. Please share this information, like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll admit this is not typically the type of video that I do, but we all need to know how to survive a hurricane, even if we're not near the coast. Till next time, here's to your good health and keeping safe, even when the storms of life come our way. And may God bless.